we just give it a try. We give it a try, we do good, we do the best job we can. We give it a try. Can I saw your foot on the camera? No. How about your toe? No. How about just the toe? No. Can you stop? It's, right, it's looking at me. I get it. It's this camera over here. I know. Well, this is Britt's toe, ready? No, that's not my toe. That's There's your, Britt's toe. That's your finger. Ay, ay, ay. Oh my God, look what I found. I found the, I found something really cool. This what you call a fucking land hound right there. This is a classic rock land hound. Look at that fucking hound. Rabbit. You have a care in the world right now? So my neighbor, two houses over, has been doing a construction project in his backyard for like fucking three, four weeks. And now that it's quarantine, he's just going at it every day. Got the fucking chop saw, got the driver. I think he's building like a, um, some kind of a, a back house or something. I want so bad to ask him what he's building, but at the same time I know that People get cagey about that because they're like, oh, you can report me to the permit people. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I want to see a super messy ass table. Check this shit out. This is my mess table right here. It's so messy. It's got all my fucking, this is my little work table here. So I got this knife sharpener. It's really badass. It's a, uh, that's, what, that's what I should set up, okay? What am I gonna do here? I'm gonna set up, this is what I said I was gonna do a while ago. It's just, I have trouble <laughs> getting stuff started until I, I basically have to like do this and fucking fail at it and then figure out how to set it up. I'll set, what I'll do is I'll set it up. <laughs> it's a fucking messy ass, look how messy that table is. It's a mess table. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it up so I can, um, you know, just do a stream of sharpening knives. I'm not that good at it though. It's fucking hard to do it. I, I don't really get the whole process of it exactly. This, this whole porch is just a 100% goddamn mess. It's a mess house, mess zone. So this is the cool ass thing I got. See that right there? That is a big old uh, log from a palm tree that was cut down on, I've got some whetstones. I'm sorry, I started the fucking chats. Lagging. I got. I have some whetstones. I've used those before. I like those. But this is the. Uh, here, I'll just. I'll just fucking show you. I'll show you what it is. I hate how messy this is. I'm just gonna clean this up today. Here it is. This is a. It's basically a belt sander. Someone mentioned on either YouTube or someplace else about getting a a belt sander to do sharpening of large things like machetes and tools like that. And I and I got that and I used it and I used it to sharpen. This is one of my favorite tools of all time. I've used it a bit, it's kind of rusted a little bit since I've sharpened it, but it's fucking, this thing is lick sh fucking sharp right now. It's almost like I'll cut myself. Oof, it's sharp. The base here is, this part is, this part right there, very, very sharp. Yeah. It's sharp as shit. It could be a little sharper though. So this thing works great. You can um, you can take the guard off of it and sharpen. Uh, you can sharpen like a sh like a shovel or a huge a huge thing. And it has this little guide on it you can put on too to allow you to sharpen like kitchen knives and things that are normal size like scissors even. This is it. See, let's let's you set the uh, let's you set the angle of the. Yeah, it's a pretty cool little thing. It's called the it's called the Ken Ken Onion. Who, Ken Onion's a knife designer, and he came up with that some company called WorkSharp. So how it works is you set this thing. You see that? You can set the you can set the angle. See, that's a really shallow angle. And you can see it's starting to widen there. It's hard to show it on stream. See how much wider that is than the... Yeah, there, so you can't, it's hard to really see actually, but 
it's this piece compared to this. Because it's not, it's not the angle of that, it's the angle of it because compared to the angle of the belt. So it works pretty damn good if you do enough passes with it, you know? minute comedy routine yeah I should actually do that 10 minutes is a weird amount of time um, yeah I got that sharpness I'm gonna make some fucking sharpening vids I'll show you now the garden right now the uh, the vegetable garden at least oh, rabbits going inside are you gonna stay outside or what stay outside okay so here's the uh, veggie garden right here. And uh, maybe that's not a good angle to show you. Let's move over here. So. I'm building an elephant chair for the eucalyptics. I'll show you the uh, the garden here. So this right here is a uh, sweet pepper, like a box pepper. It's from last season, but I cut it back. And I've been, uh, I think I should probably snip, snip this piece here so it's nice and bushy and low. Because that's a little bit of an outlier there. But this will start putting out some nice stuff at some point. This is all Italian leaf lettuce. Um, this stuff is about to bolt. I don't really like the way it tastes, but it's been very successful. This one, this particular type has taken over, even though there's some of these uh, smoother varieties sewn in there. And this is uh, the spinach. It's doing great. This is a volunteer pepper that I um, had, it just came last year. But I don't really like the way it tastes, so I'm probably going to snip it. Um, this right here is a nice, this is a habanero. I've had this for probably about three years or four years now. And I just let it winter over, but I'm, I'm going to cut this back pretty severely so it can grow. See, this is some, this is some little winter shit here. That's a habanero, but obviously it's not going to really do that well until it starts getting hot outside. This is my garlic, one of my garlics right there. And this is all, I'm letting this sit right now. I'm about to add a bunch of soil to it. I do have some, a uh, little bit of these, uh, these are some radishes I just threw in here for the hell of it. They're coming up. And um, I don't know what this is. This is something, it might be some spinach or something. But so everything, I'm going to rip out everything here except for the spinach and these chives. These chives are my pride and joy right now. Look at these fucking things. They, they just love this time of year, I think. And you can see here, this is the... Uh, this is a flower. I wish it would focus on that. I don't need to shade the lettuce because the lettuce doesn't need shade right now. It actually gets a lot of shade because it's where the garden is situated. But um, I don't grow lettuce in the summer. It's too hard. It's just too damn hot. So, yeah. Um, I suppose I could put it on this end of the garden, like the, this part right here. I could put lettuce here. That's why I put the chives there. The chives are actually doing really well now. This is this garden is relatively new, so I've come still trying to figure out some of the angles and what stuff what likes what. Um, but I think I might try to put some lettuce in here. Um, for the summer, I I did a, a bunch of romaine over the winter, and those those are really good. I've already harvested them all, eaten them all. Fuck is that? I just heard. Okay, so but that's that's the main vegetable box right there. This is some cool shit right here. I love this. This is my this is my um this is a uh, um wisteria. It's uh, second year of the wisteria. It just flowered. The cool thing about the wisteria, uh, the cool thing about the wisteria is that it um. 
it flowers first in the, in the spring and then it starts to veg out. So all these leaves and stuff, these are new. As far as crossbreeding, I've had crossbreeding, one time I had a, um, I had a watermelon uh, that grew as a volunteer in the garden. A volunteer, if you don't know, is when a plant just starts growing that you, just, you didn't plant. It's because like a seed was in the soil and it just and it was just in there. Or it's from a plant that dropped a seed nearby or from like a bird that shit it out. And I had a watermelon that basically had orange flesh uh, because it was so close to, what was it close to? I can't remember now, but it was definitely crossbred. It did not taste didn't taste bad, it just had almost no taste at all. It was, wasn't very good. Um, God, this is such a mess out here. It's like an embarrassing, truly a full-on fucking mess. Oh, I'll just show you this. Let me show you this. I've got these strawberries. So I had these strawberries. I put them in last year, but they, uh, I put them in a spot in the garden that was too shady and only got sun in the summer. So I just, yesterday or two days ago, I don't know, three days ago. I don't know what time is any, anymore at all. But I spent, like, it was so fucking hard. I'll show you what I did, okay? Let me move this ugly shit out of the way. I hope the chat doesn't... hope the stream doesn't stop because of the fucking bandwidth. So, um... So there's the garden bed. There's the dog. Uh, it was way over there. I don't know if you can see by that by the ginger plant. That's uh, right behind the, uh, the little lounge chair. It was over there, and then I moved it all the way to here. And this thing weighs, God knows, weighs 100 pounds or something, maybe more. I couldn't possibly fucking lift this thing. So I rolled it on its side the entire way over here, and the soil was so compact it didn't fall out. So now I've got this, uh, these strawberries, and it's getting just a lot of light. Look at that, I've already got one. So you've got a lot of sets here. Isn't that great? Look at that. Look at all those fucking little strawberries. So I think if this gets, this is gonna come back online and really start producing this year. Cause it's not really crowded in there. So they can really spread out. And the whole thing with strawberries, <clears throat> there's a bunch of stuff with strawberries that people I think don't know. I took me a long time to learn is that Strawberries need to be established before they really fruit. So you have, you have to have them growing in the same place for at least a year before they actually start to really produce any um, any strawberries. And the other thing is they send off these runners, they're called. And a runner is like a little clone the strawberry makes where it, it shoots off a little, it's hard to describe, but it's, imagine like a, uh, I can't find any, I don't have any runners in here right now. I think a couple of these are, have been, let's see, I'm trying to show you. I think a couple of these have been cloned by the plant itself. But right now it has no runners. Runners typically happen later in the season when the plant's trying to, trying to, uh, uh, you know, it's trying to, um, to make more of itself. Uh, but right now these are all originals, I believe. I'm not sure though. So with these strawberries though, the runners you'll send out, they, uh, God, this must have been chewed up like a motherfucker, look at that. This little bastard got chewed on. But it's still kind of wooded out. I don't know, we'll see what happens. These strawberries, I have not really cared for them at all because they just were doing so poorly in that area. So I'm gonna do my favorite thing to do right now, which is I'm gonna lay down in the fucking, in the goddamn rocks. God, I love laying in the fucking rocks. This is honestly probably my favorite thing in the whole, the whole part about this garden I like the most is this right now. Oh, God. Okay, so, the strawberries, they, um, they send these little runners out. It's like a little, a long limb that shoots out from the main body of the plant that has a miniature plant on it ready to start rooting. And uh, that, what it does is it, it can be good. You can clip them and give them to people. They want to start strawberries really easily instead of starting from seed. 
because the clones work way faster than, than the seed, obviously. But the, um, I'm sorry, it's just too fucking bright for me. But you want to snip those runners because they just suck energy from the plant. I snipped the runners. So what I did is I, uh, I took the uh, strawberries and I added a couple big baseball-sized clumps of this fertilizer. Basically, it's worm castings because I had a bunch of bunch of shellfish a bunch of dead shellfish and I put them in a bucket in the ground put a bunch of soil over it I had a bunch of holes for worms and other microbes to get in there and I basically left it for about eight months and I went back and it would all turn into this really thick rich rich I said it was a combination of rich and dense of this rich this rich dense soil and uh, because all the all the worms and stuff had eaten everything, and I, I uh, took some clumps of that, and I balled it up. I kind of scratched off the surface of the strawberry, a couple, three places in the strawberry. Put those balls in the in the soil, then covered it with mulch, with some wood chips I got for free. You can always get wood chips for free, by the way, if you ever want to do some. Uh, I'm not talking about mulch necessarily, but wood chips, because wood chips are nice and dry. Because it's always like fucking, what do you call it? Uh, municipal tree places that are that are mulching. And I put that over the those balls of clay, what do you call it? Worm castings. So when I water it, it'll filter through the soil and give the strawberries a lot of nutrients. Because strawberries like a lot of, they like rich soil. Uh, they like they, they like a lot of uh, what do you call it? They like uh, they want to be fed. They want nutrients. But then you'll get some. I'll get some fucking good ass strawberries too. They like the heat. They're kind of like weed plants, I think. Where they like it moist soil and a lot of heat, like tomatoes, like anything like that. <clears throat> that's the deal with the strawberries right now. I can show you that. Let me show you that bucket of a bucket of stuff I got. I'll show it to you. Maybe that it can help me. I'll go get it. I might grow some weed at some point. Okay. Let me show you this. So, can't we see in there? Can you see in there that well? can't tell. I mean, it's just really dark. But this stuff is, is super wet. And it's real finely... It smells like nothing. Rabbit's about seven? Seven years old? Yeah, it has no smell. It just smells like nice, um... Just real... Real rich stuff. This is so fucking good. This is the stuff I, I honestly, I kind of like the, uh, some of the soil composites more than a lot of the plants. To me, it's more interesting than, these plants are cool, right? But if you can get this, if you can make soil, I mean, look at that. It's a little dense ball of worm vermiculite. It's like a very clayy, from the sea, this stuff. Uh, yeah, the stuff from the sea, I guess, it's it's uh, a bunch of old dead crawfish. A ton of dead crawfish. Not not cooked, either. They were they were dead. See, this is how you know it's good. Um, I don't know where I, I, don't know where I learned all this, a lot of this stuff. It's just been years and years of fucking around. A lot of stuff you just kind of learn from fucking around. But see, look at this. See, this is a little clump here. This right here, this is how you know it's good. See how my hands are all dirty from playing with it? That's how you know it's just good. And also when I, when I turn this in the, in the light, you see a little shiny flex, like it reflects light. And I think that means it's got like some silica, some type of comp, some type of um, mineral content. But honestly, I don't, I don't actually know. A lot of this stuff is kind of like me 100% shooting from the hip and it being like, well, this looks different than 
the normal soil in the garden. It doesn't have any wood content at all, which is good because you don't want too much wood content because that is an organic compound that will break down and create nitrogen, which you want, but you don't want too many organics in your soil because then you get a lot of um, larger invertebrates like grubs and stuff like that that want to live in the soil. And a lot of times when they get dependent upon there being an organic thing in the soil, then they start to eat the roots of certain plants. So you don't want that. You want to have a large mineral component to your soil. I mean, obviously a lot of this stuff is specific to, see that's a little piece of wood. That's a little piece of wood I found there just now. So you don't really want that in there, but it also it doesn't hurt. So this is very clay-like. See that? I just broke that in half and I can like push it together. So that implies that it's a heavy mineral soil, which the, gar the soil in my bed, and if you buy potted soil, it's potting soil, it's not gonna be that way. But this stuff is really good in small amounts because it, uh, it just gives all these minerals the plants love. And I'm pretty sure that those sparkles, maybe I can, maybe you can see the sparkles, let's see here. Like I said, this came from, I put about, I don't know, 40 crawfish in the dirt. Being like a pile of dirt covered with a bunch of bricks so nothing could get in there. No raccoons could get in there, nothing could get in there. Like I really ensured it. Cause stuff wanted to get in there and eat those little fucking rotten ass crawfish, right? They wanted to get in there. I've actually, I have seen a couple of like little, I saw like maybe one one crawfish arm in there. Okay, maybe you can see this now. Let's see here, you can see this. This is a pretty good clump. I mean, I don't know. I just, I think it's so gonna be so, okay, just, I'm gonna twist this slowly. See if I can get to focus on that. You know, I'm gonna turn the camera around. That'll work. Well, probably had probably had smell, but it was under the ground. This was this was under the ground for eight months. I didn't touch it. I didn't go in there, don't there, look at it at all. I did nothing. Okay, so here it is. Here's the uh, the ball. Now you see how how it kind of glints a bit. You see that? Maybe you can see it a little bit. You see some little glints of just stuff. You know, you see little glints of tiny, tiny particles that are, I think, I think those are, I think those are uh, some, kind of, some kind of minerals or just things that don't get broken down. And I think that worms, when they eat stuff, that's why this is so fine. It's because worm vermiculite, or it's worm shit. Worm shit is very uh, small particles. And worms like to eat silica like you should give them eggshells you have to give worms eggshells because they actually use it in their digestion the same way you give chickens little rocks and stuff because they have a gizzard they pound stuff up in and so that's why chicken shit so fucking great to use if you cook it down because if you if you let it if you put chicken shit in your garden fresh it's too hot it has too much uh ammonia and it'll burn stuff. But when you let it compost, I mean, that's the thing about composting that's so interesting. Also, there's a lot of conjecture about is people will, like, there's a lot of people say, don't use dog shit. Never compost, never use dog shit in your garden, which is total fucking bullshit because it's like, you know, you know the old, there's like an old Indian thing about you bury a, you bury a fish head underneath a seed of corn and it gives you a fucking, huge badass um, piece of a corn plant because of that because it has all these minerals in it from the sea and the decomposition all this stuff it's just like a perfect thing and so you put a fish head in the ground and grow something on it but not dog shit like how come you do a fish and obviously yeah dog shit does have it's from a meat-eating animal and uh, it's not something you want to put directly in your garden, but if you can bury it, and I wouldn't put it in my compost either because my compost doesn't get hot enough to cook that down. But there's two things. Your dog, unless you have a fucking wild, crazy dog that you know, runs around in the wild, your dog is, does not have any parasites or does not carry your E. coli because it's 
it's essentially like you it's a it's a domesticated animal that lives indoors so it's not it's healthy and the other thing is is that um, I'm trying to think I don't even know what I was gonna say but basically because that they are because they are uh, domesticated and stuff you don't have to worry about their shit having these bacteria in it that that you wouldn't also have yourself from living with them but the um, this is a great little thing. You just dig a little hole, put this in the ground next to the plant. Ooh, baby. Um, but the, uh, you can just, yeah, what I do is I save all the dog shit, and I don't put it in my compost compost. I just dig a big old fucking hole, and I throw it in a hole and let it sit there. Maybe I'll throw some stuff in there, like some, some lettuce or just some weed, uh, like some trimmings of, um, like, weed clippings or leaves or something like that, just to kind of, like, you know, give it something else for the worms to eat but um oh you having connection issues fuck me man it's probably because i'm just further enough away from everything but basically you just do that and you just let it sit for like six months and that's gonna get cooked down 100 percent. okay well um i haven't listened to t i have heard a 10 foot ganja, ganja plant but i haven't listened to them <sighs> Okay, we'll clear that up. I put that stuff back in the shade. I don't want it to be get too dried out because I haven't figured out where to use it yet. I'm gonna put it. I put it in the strawberries. I put it in the. Uh, I put. I don't know. I'm gonna put it. In, I'm just gonna put it in everything. You know. John Brown's body. Oh, that's a cool name for a band. God. Uh. So stuff I gotta do out here is I want to um. So you can see this right now. Look at this. You see my hand? See how it's? Is it glinting? Can you see it glinting? Let's see right in the sun. See that? Do you see how it's shiny? That's from the uh, the dirt. I wish I knew what that was. It looks like fucking glitter, to be honest. That's so crazy. Maybe I can flip the camera around, you can see it. Does it look like glitter? Holy shit, it does, you can see it. What the fuck is that, huh? Wasn't that crazy? Yeah, I really don't know what that is. I, I always thought that was it's just so shiny. I'm actually, it's silicate, right? Yeah, and I think silicate comes from the worms and the fact that they're eating, they're eating a bunch of shellfish. That's my guess. Here's the other thing about dog shit that's really good. Dog shit has a ton of, what's the mineral? There's a mineral in dog shit that's not in other shits that is uh, really good for your garden. I think it's the reason it turns white. I want to say it's potash. <laughs> I think it's potash, which is by far one of the coolest words of all time. It's fucking potash. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, like in like civics class, learning about the word like a potash mine, being like, <clears throat> that's the fucking pot. I think it comes from the word potash, right? Because you're burning, you used to burn the chamber pots, and that's what we left over after the chamber pot, which is a fucking pot of shit. Um, so, yeah, I think that's what it comes from. Potash is why it's called that. It has a, has a property. I think it's saltpeter, actually. Saltpeter, which is a, one of the main ingredients in gunpowder. Um, it's also something, one of the reasons that uh, hallucinogenic mushrooms grow on cow shit is because of salt, the presence of saltpeter. And I think that allows psilocybin mushrooms to grow and nothing else. That's why you don't have to worry about like all the fucking, all the fucking psychonauts in here are like, yep, uh-huh, uh, we know, buddy. <laughs> all the fucking psychonauts. Uh, yeah, that stuff is, uh, so interesting how that works. Um, yeah, but the guard, so my guard plan over here, I'll just flip the camera on. I can't go, can't go neat, neat close to there. Near to there, I can't fucking talk anymore. I think I'm so goddamn thirsty, I can't talk. Like, I actually need to drink some water. So, let me just explain. Oh, this is, 
what type of pebbles am I laying on? I believe this is just some, uh, I don't know, you tell me. Pebbles or pebbles? I think it's called pea gravel. I just have an obsession with pea gravel. I fucking love pea gravel. To me, it's like the most comforting thing, the sound it makes when you walk on it, just laying in it, because it feels clean all the time, you know? Because you basically, it's these little impermeable rocks of probably granite and who knows what, and they get, there's something on it, something grows on it, and um, when the sun hits it, it just sterilizes it, so it's basically like laying on this clean, this clean bed of, you know, it's just, it just feels fucking good. I actually have a bunch of plants growing in pots on the pea gravel, which I think I need to move because I saw some old pictures of my, uh, thing that, see, I have them growing there, and they're taking up my space for my, my fucking pea gravel. See, now I'm getting blasted. But yeah, I just fucking love pea gravel, man. I really do. Nothing beats pea gravel. It's just the greatest. It does kind of go everywhere, though. But I mean, you know what? Everything you got to pay for. You get what you pay for. You get the, you get the wonderful, you get the wonderful uh, feel of the pea gravel and how it feels and sounds. You have to deal with it kind of going everywhere sometimes, you know? It's just, it's not so bad. So my plan with the garden here, with this one section of the garden, I will sh now show you. I honestly need some fucking input on this because I don't really, I don't know. Okay, I'll show you. So I'm going to switch the camera around. Okay, so you see over there along that wall where those barrels are? There's a grapevine that's gonna, I'm gonna trellis up the, up the wall there to the left of that window. But I'm gonna put, there's a tree over here. You see that tree? That, it's hard to explain, but basically that tree over there is a loquat tree that I grew from seed. So I grew, the, I grew this loquat tree from seed. I, I picked the seed, I ate the loquat, spit it out. On my front porch, this is probably like I don't know, six years ago, and that little guy grew up, and he's in a pot. He's in a pretty big pot, but he's definitely way too big for the pot, and I've always wanted to have him either have a bigger pot or maybe even in the ground uh, so he can grow and maybe give me some fruit at some point, right? And I thought about putting him over there in the corner of the garage. Well, the garage, I'll show you. About putting him over putting them over there, that last barrel over there. That very last barrel on the corner, I thought about putting them in there. But then I realized if it's next to the grapevine, the grapevine's gonna wanna grow up the fucking tree. So it's like, I spent all this work putting that grapevine in the ground over there. Uh, and um, I'm not going to move the fucking grapevine. It's in a perfect spot. It's going to grow up the side of that, of that garage in a nice little empty zone on a trellis that I'm going to get eventually. And uh, it's a good spot for it. But so now I'm kind of like, I don't know what to put there instead. I was thinking about maybe putting that, this palm tree right here. This, sorry, I'll show you. This palm tree, that palm tree right there. It's kind of a nice looking palm. But I also don't really know, you know, if that's if that's the best place for it. I could put that banana tree over there because I've got this little pot of banana tree that I think is getting too much sun right there. It used to be over there, but it was I decided I wanted to have it here. But I think where it is right now is just too much fucking sun for that goddamn banana tree. Like bananas like a lot of heat and light, but they don't want it to be. They don't want to be blasted and like the California style heat and light is not what they want and if it's up against a, a, a white background like that it's going to reflect a lot of light and I find that place my old garden in the old house was like that and it was so it was way too bright it was way too goddamn bright for the uh, for a lot of vegetables and it's definitely going to be too too much for the fucking banana trees so I should paint my garage black. But that's not the issue, though. The issue is the 
is the coexistence of the loquat tree and the grapevine. Because the, the loquat tree is going to train towards... The loquat tree is going to want to grow this way, like this way, you know? It's going to want to grow that way towards the light, and the grapevine is going to want to grow on it. I don't want that. I also don't know if I want to not put the loquat tree... I think I want to put it in the ground proper. But I don't know if that's too close to the garage. It's a tough one. This is the kind of shit that I like keeps me up basically. It's such a it's like dumb shit, but it's such a conundrum, you know. It's like moving 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 parts, you know. Otherwise, I have everything else pretty much. I know where I want to what I want to do with most stuff. I have rocks in my pocket. Um yeah. I mean, this corner right here, this is my favorite corner of the whole garden is right here. I didn't even talk about this. See that right there? That right there is a big thing of sage. That's some uh, Cleve Londi sage. And um, got some other white sage next to it. You can't really see it, but it just it sticks out over there. And the dog runs underneath it and gets his dog perfume. This is some plant. I can't remember the name of it, but it started off as maybe about that big. And then it's grown to be massive, obviously. And this is a uh, Brugmansia that um, is a volunteer that just actually it's not it's not a volunteer proper. It was it was growing there before, but we ripped everything up, and now it's just back. And it's so happy. I can't wait till it starts flowering. Maybe next season it will start flowering. Um, yeah, the roots could damage the foundation. That's true of the tree, um, but also it's I don't know if it would really damage that much. It's an old cement garage. There was a big avocado tree growing here before, and uh, I don't think it's going to... I don't think the loquats are that aggressive, actually. I mean, I could do some reading, but you probably have a good point there. That it might not be the best thing to... Well, that's the whole thing. I, 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 put it, I was going to put it in a pot. I'm going to put it in one of these half wine barrels, so it wouldn't be in the ground. The idea would be... There's enough holes in the bottom where some roots could, some small roots could get out and get some extra nutrients. So I wouldn't have to water it as much. But I also have a drip system set up, so I wouldn't have to worry about that. Um, yeah, loquats can get pretty big, but they don't get, for the most part, you don't see them that big. They grow kind of slow. There was a big, big ass one that we used to pick loquats from in Echo Park, and that thing was a fucking behemoth. Yeah. Um, my, I, my idea though is with those barrels against the garage there is to in the winter time I can put stuff in there that would grow in the summer it could get so much sun that I think I can grow like lettuce all throughout the winter in those pots and in the summer I think it's going to get too hot over there to really grow anything except for the most hardy of shit and so I might just make them to be like some flower beds and maybe put like a little like a, uh, like a, um, a board on there so you can maybe make a little bench out of there or some shit. My neighbor's talking to his cat right now. He's telling him to get back so he can go inside the house. He's an old, old man. He's yelling at the cat saying, get back. I got a bunch of, bunch of, uh, I can't even talk now. I got a bunch of grow bags. I got f six grow bags or five or five or six grow bags so I can grow a bunch more vegetables in this new apocalypse. And I'm going to do it in the driveway over here. So this is like a cool little grow zone. What the fuck? Uh, along there. I'm gonna put all those grow bags so I can grow a bunch of vegetables. Cause th this bed is big, right? That's a fucking big ass bed. But when it comes down to it, if you're growing like eggplant, if I've got eggplant at all, which I love, um, if I've got, there's certain things that just take up so much fucking space. I'd rather have them be in their own pot elsewhere that I can manage than having them be in there. Cause it just, they just get so goddamn big. So the big plan right now is to put 
peas in here. Put, put, put peas. Put in some carrots. Put in some uh, okra. But okra is going to be a few, a few, uh, probably another month or two. Um, am I prepared to defend my crops? No. But, I mean, I have a huge ass dog. And I have a lot of uh, very large tools that are also known as weapons. Um, for example, this is. This is sort of uh, the smallest machete I own. This this is the smallest one by far. So there's those. And also, if you want to come steal my vegetables, then um, you got to live with that. I would love all these people in line at the gun store. It's so funny. It's like, I bet half of those guns people are going to fucking kill themselves with. <laughs> fucking idiots. Buy a gun so you can kill yourself when you didn't get enough food. Okay, I have to get some water. And um, did I show you the stump yet? The palm stump? I'm so stoked about this. I have too many fucking projects going on. Like this fucking quarantine is actually a nightmare because there's too many things to do. So this thing, it's a big stump from a palm tree. Huge stump. It must, the thing must weigh like 70 pounds. It's so fucking heavy. It's log with water right now, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it, I'm gonna square off the top, expose all the sides, and then cut the bottom up like maybe three, three, four inches. So it's about, you know, um, about like side table size. And I'm gonna seal it, and then I'm gonna have it be like a little fucking piece of furniture. And I guess I could keep it outside, but I kinda want it to be nice enough to be inside. Okay, I'm gonna go back inside now. How's Animal Crossing? Good. Okay. I'm gonna stop now. So in the future, I'm gonna figure out a way, a couple things. Number one idea is to uh, find a way to stream on YouTube simultaneously, which I know is pretty damn easy. Number two, I got the Elgato coming so I can, um, Play, we can do video games, stream video games, which will be fun. Maybe maybe Dick or Troy will join. And number three, I'll get a repeater so I can get the camera outside in the yard. And I'll just fucking do a goddamn, I'll just put it on a tripod, wide angle, maybe run it from the, uh, I have a legit, I have this fucker right here, right? An actual webcam, not the fucking telephone. And I'll put it on the, uh, put it on the, on the, what do you call it, the tripod, and just do, you know, an hour or two of, of gardening. It's just, it'll be, maybe I'll have some, some music on in the background. background. Um, I got OBS, yeah, bro. I got OBS. Figuring that out. So I can do that. I'll, I'll stream this stuff I'm talking about through OBS. I'll be streaming the games through OBS. I'll be streaming the, just the generic garden work. I'm basically gonna, yeah, the Discord, start to the Discord. Um, I think that makes sense. Restream, uh, okay, cool, thank you so much. I really appreciate everybody for being here and being like, kind of like, um, you know, <laughs> give me all these suggestions and stuff, for real. Because I get like, it's so difficult for me to, to figure out stuff at the beginning because it's just, there's too many things, yeah. Yeah, um, we'll do more of just, maybe just an hour of laying in the rocks. Oh, God, man. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much. Um, I'll see you again soon. And, uh, you know, keep washing your fucking hands.